Hello everybody and welcome to another rogue video. This time it's Pyracle Rogue, which is also kinda dependent on the Miraculous turn, but also fits the new pirates in. Uh, what basically every good meta deck does right now, except for the Dragon Priest. They all run pirates. And we already have pretty much the best card to open with. Small time book in here. Swashburglar is pretty good too. I usually don't like to have them both in my starting hand, but that's fine. We'll go with the small time buccaneer first since we can then dagger up next turn and do a lot of damage. Here is Patches. Hello Patches. Let's go. I think this is probably the most annoying and in the same time the most fun card in the new set. I actually really like it, although a lot of people are kinda not so happy about it since it buffed ag aggro, but I think that's pretty... It was necessary, it was necessary to buff aggro since midrange shaman reigned over everything, which was basically the reason why aggro was absent and I think the meta has just yet to be stabilized a bit and if it does then we will probably have a, a fine a good balance between control and aggro matchups. So we still want to dagger up and trade into this I guess. It's not the best thing but the good thing on Pyracle Rogue is that it's unlike Pirate Warrior, it doesn't uh, rely so much on board presence because you have this miraculous turn that gives you a chance to win the game in the mid game. So we rather want to have the board clear against the priest. He is uh, probably going to outvalue us anyhow on the board. Yeah. This is fine. Okay, this is a bit interesting because we could clear this with a cold blood. And it's probably the only way to clear it for the next turns. Let's see, maybe you get a Shadow Word Pain or something like that. That's not Shadow Word Pain. But Holy Smite is not too bad. Yeah, I guess. We will have to clear this. He invested a lot of cards. And... You know, we have Drake coming up. Maybe we can draw into a Tomb Pillager here. And this is just basically going to eat our minions and... Going to be healed up again. And that's not the best thing to happen, so... I don't want to holy smite his face. So many little dragons. He has a really, really good starting hand. Insane. Okay, so... What do we do here? I mean, we can holy smite into SI7 agent to clear this. But it's not very effective. Holy smite plus this. Clears it as well, and then two to the face would be a possibility. Sadly, we cannot fan of knives and SI7 agent, but we want to keep those two anyways for some more clearance. Yeah, I think in this case it's it's pretty much fine to trade this in. And go for the SI7 set uh, agent onto the face. Could also just dagger up and Yeah, that's that's even better. Keep the minion on board. Have a weapon equipped. It's not as mana efficient and our board is actually weaker. But I think it's better to keep your card here. Okay, so we are 
Definitely going to Drake here. We want to dig into our deck a bit deeper. A tango? The downside of this deck is that it's really, really, really dependent onto the gut gets an auctioneer. If you can't get it, then it's very hard to win. Ooh. Okay. We could go for a huge win cleave. Although it probably doesn't really make any sense. Because Shadow at Death just wrecks us. Could go. Yeah. I want to keep the Drake because four power minions are very hard to deal with for the priest. So I guess we are going to use our Fan of Knives, SI7 agent. Take the five to the face, keep the drake out. Let's see what we draw here. Okay. It doesn't help. Ah, this guy's toast. Priest has a hard time on dealing with four power minions, and it's you know the five damage to the face are not as bad as losing this. Interesting. Another one. He has a really insane hand. Oh wow. Oh wow. This guy is very lucky. Okay. So I guess we use our Drake plus Eviscerate to clear this off. We get to draw an auctioneer. Although we don't have any spells in hand anyways. Yeah. More 4 power minions. And 6 damage is actually pretty good for an Eviscerate. Here we go. Clear this off. Problem is, the minions on the priest side are going to get bigger and bigger. And we have not yet done all too much face damage. Oh wow, he loses Entomb on that. Okay. Zap is not bad. Let's see if we can steal as good as he could. Oh wow, <laughs> that's not helpful at all. I mean, it kind of helps with Van Cleef. I'm even thinking of playing Van Cleef as a 4-4. Four -four. But on the other hand, if he doesn't have Shadow Word Death in hand, then Uncleave is actually a, quite a nice option here. Is We're going to, to find out, I guess. We can either kill this or clear the board. Usually can't do both with eight mana. So if you play Dragonfire Potion, then I'm fine because I draw another card and have a 10 10 out. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, this guy. Can you be even more lucky? I don't think so. This is just insane. Very ridiculous luck. But the game is not over yet. We are still in it question is, what do we do here? I mean, we could actually Leroy and dagger up and kill the 1-1 one -one hmm. and do 10 to the face, which doesn't seem too shabby. And he has yet to kill the Leroy afterwards. We could also use the Drake to kill the other little guy. But we know that he runs Holy Smite. No, no. We stole that with a Swashburg. That, that doesn't mean that he runs it. Um, yeah. I think I'm gonna risk it. I wanna get him low. Question is whether we want to do 10. No. I want to do 6 to the face and see what he has here. 
So things that wreck us are Shadow World Death. Okay, that's not too bad. We can zap this. Oh, wow. <laughs> that guy. One of those has to be discovered. Oh, no. Okay, I thought we had already one. Well, that's a pretty lucky draw. I think we go for the Miracle turn here. Let's see what we can do. Let's coin first. Okay, that's not very helpful. Prep. Also not very helpful. Okay, so sadly, couldn't find any finishing blows here. Thinking of playing Van Cleef again. Van Cleef plus Dagger. Yeah. I guess that's the best play. Let's do this. As I said, he's pretty much in the same situation as last time. He has to kill death and clear the board, which is not all too easy. He just had two taunts. He has one more in hand, which does not protect him from dying here. And yeah, that's it. Wow, even though our enemy had a really, really good draw, we actually won that game. GG. Alright, welcome to round number two. This is against a Warlock, since Mean Streets of Gadgets and Hit, there are almost no Zulogs anymore. So it's very likely that this is a handlock slash Kazakas Reno lock. So what's good against these guys? Kind of nice is not. I feel like Eviscerate doesn't help much anyway. One backstep goes back as well. I'm wondering if I want to keep this or not. If I manage to draw into a pirate and he coins out a minion, like Dark Peddler or anything, then it's probably good to have this. So I'll keep one. Let's see if we can find a pirate. He mulliganed all of his three cards. We can find a pirate. I would want to have some more minions in this hand, but that's fine. It's very spell heavy. In the early game, you tend to want to have a bit more minions, but that's fine. I mean, we have the dream opening again, and we are on the coin, so we'll see what he has here. Ha, huh. okay. That's a bit sad. It's a very risky play for him. Yeah, who knows. Okay, so... Sadly, cannot just dagger up here. I think we have to use Backstep Eviscerate. Because even if we dagger up, so then we have 3, options. 4, 5 damage and we have to trade all our minions in. That's not what we want. We could use Preparation, but it doesn't really help to play Fan of Knives. It's only 1 damage. So, sadly we have to waste 2 of our spells here. But keeping the minions is actually good. That's really, really lucky and also very risky from him. I mean, there could be something like Swashburglar or anything, but in the, if it's like a Tomb Pillager or anything, then he has a huge problem. Here we go. Yeah. I mean, even daggering up is adding four to the four damage in total, which is pretty fine here. He's, he's under a lot of pressure. That's a good draw. That's a very good draw. We still just want to hit his face, I think. We cannot deal with the Drake with what we have on board, so he's going to trade here anyways. And at this point... 
I mean, I know that Reno is probably in his hand and that face damage is eventually not gonna cut it. But there is... You know, the, the Warlock always has to consider whether he can dig deeper into his deck and tap and actually risk not playing Reno Jackson. Or playing Reno maybe when he's on something like 15 health, which is not optimal. But if he doesn't, then we can, you know, hit him hard with Leroy and any combination of uh, Eviscerate or anything. So I think it's actually right to hit his face here, even yeah. though he probably has Reno. You want to occupy his mind as much as you can. He has to think hard whether he wants to play Reno early or not. Okay, that's bad. That's bad news for us. And a very good top deck for the guy. I think it, it came from the right. This is a good top deck for us. So... What's the play? Sadly, this dies to the Drake. This does not really help since we only get through. And with it gets an auctioneer coming up. Probably even though this just auto dies. Thank you. It's fine, I guess. But the question is whether we want to hit this or not. If we hit it, it dies to eviscerate. Yeah. The only reason why I do this is, I mean, he could draw into Mortal Call, which would be bad, obviously. Um, and if I run into an Eviscerate, I can clean this off. Yeah, there is not much that he can do. Wow, he uses Siphon Soul onto my Tomb Pillager. He's really scared. Okay, so. We have 10 damage from hand. The thing is, he kills my auctioneer pretty easily. Good thing we attacked in here though. But we have enough cards in hand to go off. So let's see. Okay, not all too helpful. Also not helpful. I mean, it's not bad, but it doesn't help with this turn. Neither does this. Okay, coin. Coin is actually pretty good. Oh, we could go for a huge Van Cleef. He just used his Siphon Soul. And a Zap. Okay. Yeah, I guess... I guess I'm gonna risk it. He has no twisting nether yet. And he used his siphon soul, so there shouldn't be an easy way for him to deal with that. And it's actually lethal for us if he cannot clear it. He either has to kill this or play Reno to live. I'm very curious what he can do here. Okay, that's not gonna cut it for him. Except if he can taunt it up. Okay, he can't. So, we won that. There's no way for him to live. We can just go. Prep. Lap. Hopla. Hit his face. GG. That went very well for us. Alright, welcome everybody to the next round of Pyrrhical Rogue. Let's see what we can get here. Already I see a small time Pokeneer, which makes me really happy, because I want to have this. Never want to keep Leroy, 
I mean, it's a nice card, but you want to draw into Leroy later in the game. And Blood Mage, it helps with the curve, but it's also kind of a minion that you want to play later, maybe benefit from the spell damage or cycle through your deck, which is not what you want to do right at the start of the game. So, again, Tomb Pillager and Auctioneer. This looks like an okay hand. It's not great, but minions are just good. You want to have as many minions as you can before you actually go off with your... It gets an Auctioneer. And I love the start. Okay. Classic opening. Yeah, and we are definitely going to use our backstep here. Since it allows us to keep everything on board undamaged. We could just dagger and run this in. But I want to have the free damage onto his face. And yeah, it's four turns until we get to auctioneer. So, should be fine. Let's see if he has the Totem Golem as well. At this point, I'm even. If he has it, I would even think about Shadow Striking it. Okay, he doesn't have it. I guess we want to clear the Totem. Just get the weapon up again. We cannot combo SI7 agent sadly. There's no point in shadow striking. But against the shaman you always want to clear the board. They have stuff like flame tongue totem. Here we go. And that's not what you want, since this then trades into our small time Buccaneer. Who is really the MVP of Pyrical Rogue actually. I mean, get, gets an Auctioneer is very important, but the early damage this card does is just insane. Okay, Storm. That's fine. I'm totally fine with this play. He, is, he used the coin and he's overloaded, so he has only two mana left for next turn. So, I'm just going to play Tomb Pillager here. Wanna have the coin soon. And even if he has Totem Golem now, then yes, this dies. So but we have Shadow Strike in hand. And there is just no Thank point you. in doing anything go. different. So let's see if he can overload again. Okay. Looks like you can't. That's great news for us. Right, another spell. Good. So, again, we want to clear, and since these two play together, go this play. He used one storm already, so I'm not really afraid. And actually, I want to keep a hold on the weapon. He totems again, gets the 1-1 one, one totem, and I want to be able to deal with that. Okay, that's when you know that the Shaman is really desperate for cards. Another auction here, that's not very helpful. So we have 10 damage, 11 damage, plus 5, 16, not enough to kill him. Shadow Strike kills his ring from below. In case he draws into one. So there is no point in going full face here. Hey, lights out. Just three dagger. You have no prep. So I mean 
I guess you you could run out an auctioneer here, but there's simply no point in doing this. It doesn't really accelerate your lethal. Okay. Wow. That's good. There is this thing from below. Okay. So we can clear the board. We cannot play Auctioneer plus Shadow Strike, sadly. Since we don't have spell damage anymore, we can also not clear this with our Eviscerate, which we usually don't want to do anyway. I think we just play the Drake. If we play the Drake, we also have to coin. Burglar. See what we get. That's not bad. That's actually pretty good. But I don't think it's better than playing Shadow Strike here. Keep the board presence, and this is going to help a lot with holding it. Oh, wow, there is his first Jake Golden. Okay, so we have 4 5 damage, plus 4 is 9. Plus another 4 is 13. Oh, minus 1, just 12. Is there a point in using auction here? I don't think so. Typically, these decks do not run all too much heal. So. I'm I'm switching to the face plan right now. Hey, lights out. But we are trading here. Just this can take away our our SI7 agent too easily. And we want to play the Buccaneer as well. Yeah. We could have Redaggered, killed this and get an elemental, but this just makes his second storm way too strong. Or anything like Blood Mage plus Milestone Portal number two. Okay. Wow. Okay, Hex. Both Hexes used. That's not a good idea. Okay, so. We have one here, four damage plus this is nine. GG. Even draw into a prep. Wow, oh, these were some great games.